Samsung's version of Android 14 is finally here in beta 1 for the Galaxy S23 series in the form of One UI 6.0. I've got it available on my S23 Ultra and it's a bigger update than even I expected. So let's talk about my top favorite features. <laughs> First one has got to be the new camera widget shortcut. This is so clutch because you can create a custom camera shortcut that allows you to start the camera in a specific mode straight from the home screen. You can rename the camera widget shortcut you created, choose whether the camera starts from the front or back camera and choose pretty much any shooting mode you want. You can then choose where you want the pictures and videos to be saved and select what cover image you want shown on the widget. Top of the list, this is my favorite feature. Next again is the camera, and this time the user interface has finally gotten a major update, which is definitely going to make using the camera more fun and easier. There is now a toggle for selecting the different resolutions your camera can take pictures. In the case of the Galaxy S23 Ultra, you can choose 12, 50, and 200 megapixels to choose from the main camera which is much quicker and easier than before. Favorite is the video quality options because now you can select it and a pop-up window appears without covering up the other camera settings at the top and shows you in a nice way what video size and frame rate FPS are available on which camera. If you jump into the settings, then this is where things get juicy. There is now an advanced intelligence options menu. Here is where you will find the option to enable and disable the scene optimizer setting. But that's not the best part. There is now a setting for quality optimization for image quality and speed of capture. There is maximum, which is the one on by default, medium for the best of both, and also minimum for the fastest capture speed. Just know if you pick medium or minimum, it turns off scene optimizer. This basically borrows directly from the camera assistant good luck extension from the Galaxy Store, which had the capture speed settings for quality, balance, and speed. Glad to see Samsung are integrating it here natively and giving users more control. O2 FPS video now gives you the options to work in 30 and 60 FPS videos, which if you didn't know from before, this feature allows your videos in low light to be brighter and cleaner overall. Yes, an oversimplification, but that's basically how it works. Now, I'm usually not one to watermark my pictures, but I do like the fact that they've added the option to add the time and date separately from each other. And also the ability to position the watermark at the top or bottom of the image as such. Now, a lot has been said about the camera because that is one of the most important experiences I value in a flagship phone. But the gallery app has got some nice upgrades too. Favor one has got to be the drag and drop feature with two hands. This just shows the power of One UI with the ability to press and hold with one finger on an image or video and then use the other finger to still scroll and navigate to drop the image where you would like. Makes so much sense, it's just like a computer. Then the photo editor still gives you the option to edit and make changes to images that for example, you've added things like drawings to. Now in the past, it would actually bake in and that's it. But now you can go back and still use things like the eraser tool to rub out your drawing. Utter magic. Talk about having a major redesign and makeover. Yes, the quick settings panel. First, before we even get there, let's look at the notifications panel because I really like the visual look of how it is now with how it's spaced out. And of course, the look of the rounded corners. It just looks clean and is much easier on the eyes in my opinion. Then when we swipe down again, boom, the redesigned quick panels, which groups things together better by using all the space available on the display. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are on their own at the top left and right. And also features like vibrate, torch, and more are grouped in a four by three grid in the center with 12 icons. Then you've got the course messages and mobile data from when you are running your SIM, the brightness screen slider, with the dark mode and the eye comfort shield toggle. And last but not the least is the smart view and the device control section separate at the bottom left and right. Now, if you head back to the top, we now have an edit button in the shape of a pencil. And once you're in there, you've got the option to edit the six buttons on the top row in the order you like, and also the full grid with 12 buttons. Now, the new addition is the quick settings instant access toggle which when enabled allows you with a single swipe from the top right hand corner of the display 
It lets you access the quick settings panel straight away. Clutch. Below that, you have the options for the brightness control to show always or when the quick panel is expanded. Wow, the device control and the media output buttons and the multi-sim info to show when the quick panel has collapsed or to not show at all. Now, what I like more about this revamp to the quick settings panel is how the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggles behave. Now look, in the past, if you long press and held on them, it would actually take you straight to the main Bluetooth and Wi-Fi settings page. Whereas now, when you do that, it actually brings you up to a MIDI settings page. And then if you press done, it then takes you back to the quick settings panel. Or when you press details, that's when it takes you to the main settings page. Love this. This is also how the quick settings panel looks like when in horizontal mode. Speaking of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, to round up my top favorite features, smarter aeroplane mode. And let me tell you, as someone who travels a lot, I've been wanting this for the longest time. If you activate aeroplane mode, it usually disables things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, amongst other things. But usually when flying, I at least prefer to have my Bluetooth on for my noise cancelling headphones. And for the longer flights where Wi-Fi is available, I like to use the in-flight Wi-Fi. Now, if you enable either both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in airplane mode, it will remember next time not to turn them off. It's such a small thing, but yet it's so good. These are my top favorite features, but I've got some quick honorable mentions and some feedback on how things could be better. First is the lock screen, which now allows you to position the clock widget where you would like. Now, there's a catch. It's kind of not working properly in beta 1 at the moment, so hopefully in the next beta or the final release it will be fixed. Also, the album artwork for music and videos that have it show in full in a media control, in the quick settings panel, and also on the lock screen, which is nice. One mention is not a feature as such, but the speed and fluidity of One UI 6.0 beta 1. I can only speak for myself, but I feel like it's even smoother and faster than before. So good luck on Samsung for staying on top of this part. Now, what could be better so far? First is the quick toggle for the photo resolutions. There should be an implementation in which you can toggle through quickly with single presses. It's almost much like how it's done on iPhones for video modes. And then a long press, which actually brings up a pop-up window, just like they did with the video mode. For my left-handed people, I've got you. The quick settings instant access toggle should have a left-sided option for left-handed users. Last one is the app icon names. It's now been changed to a single line with some app names shortened for better search, but it doesn't always look clean. Like take the JBL headphones app, for example. It looks better on One UI 5.1 with two lines. Now remember, this is not a full extensive breakdown of everything that is new in One UI 6.0 Beta 1. For that, I did a full extensive video on the Sam Mobile YouTube channel, so go check that out. In conclusion, in my opinion, it's actually a bigger update than I thought. And some might disagree, but I actually think so. Especially with things like the new default system font, it's kind of growing on me. What's your thoughts on One UI 6.0 so far? Do you have it on your Galaxy S23 series? Let me know in the comment section below. That's it for me, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS to Tech Lover Squad so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.